In this video, I will introduce the TOS tables or the tables of specifications. I will also explain why and how to prepare your TOS tables. The video also includes illustrations of the main learning domains and suggestions for assessment. The TOS tables are tables that outline your course learning outcomes, taking into account all the topics taught. They also include the methods of assessment, show and justify the weight given to each learning outcome. These tables help the instructor to assess the course learning outcomes and guarantee a fair coverage of the course. The term CLOs will frequently appear in this video. It simply means course learning outcomes. These are stated clearly in your course specifications. They describe the outcomes that your students are expected to be able to do after finishing the course. There are four tables that an instructor is advised to use. Curriculum Blueprint, Assessment Blueprint, Topic Weight, and CLO's Assessment. To fill in the TOS tables, you need to know your course learning outcomes and you also need to have the assigned textbook. Here is the first table that you need to fill in. The table shows the topics you plan to teach and what CLOs each topic contributes to. The table includes the following domains as prescribed by NCAAA. Knowledge, Cognition, Interpersonal Skills and Responsibility, and communication. You can extend the table if your course has some psychomotor skills that you want to teach and assess. This is just an example of how the first table may look like when completed. If by any chance you still have some CLOs not included or some topics that do not contribute to any of the CLOs, you should arrange with your course coordinator and revisit your course specifications. The second table is the assessment blueprint. It lists all the procedures that you plan to implement in the assessment of the course learning outcomes. You can add, delete, or modify any of the procedures depending on what you actually do for assessment. Please make sure that each TLO is assessed for at least once. The last column is the average that you should consider when describing the achievement of each CLO. The third table describes the topic weight. This is calculated by dividing the number of days spent on each topic by the total number of days the whole course is taught. In this way, the higher the weight is, the more assessment the topic is given. For example, if the topic weighs 20% of the course, make sure that 20% of your tests or tests are assigned to the CLO or CLOs that topic contributes to. The fourth table shows the final product of CLO's assessment. The result of each column is the average of the results of all assessment procedures applied to each domain. In our case, for example, the assessment of learning outcome 1.1, 79%, comes from the average of the quiz, 78%, and mid one, 80%, shown in the previous slide. This procedure applies to all the assessment of all other learning outcomes. There is an Excel sheet provided with this video that offers proper equations to help the instructor to do the calculation electronically. You can add a fifth domain if your course really has psychomotor skills that need to be assessed. This is how the calculation is done on Excel. The instructor needs to understand what type of learning is assessed. The NCAAA suggests five domains driven from the three major domains known as cognition, affective, and psychomotor. The first domain is knowledge, which also includes comprehension. The second is cognition, which includes application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. The third domain is the interpersonal skills and responsibility, such as listening and verbal skills. 
The fourth domain is the communication skills, whether verbal or electronic. The last domain has to do with the psychomotor skills, which are associated with physical movement or manual dexterity. These involve mind-body coordination. The assessment of each CLO differs in the way the questions are worded and according to the skills required from the students. Knowledge is the lowest skill in the hierarchy and requires only remembering information and saying it or writing it down. These questions require the learner to recall previously memorized information. Even true-false or multiple-choice questions can be worded to assess knowledge as in number 7 and 8. Comprehension is slightly higher in the cognition scale and requires understanding of learned information. These questions require the student to show understanding by explaining, restating, or summarizing. Please note that if this question is made too difficult, it will go beyond the comprehension level to a higher level such as application or analysis. The third in the scale is application, and that requires using information previously learned and applying it to new situations. Application needs knowledge and understanding too. The first question, for example, requires understanding the information given to the student and then applying it to create a graph. The second question requires understanding the instructions to install a new PC unit, and so on. Application, application, application. Analysis is the fourth on the scale, and it requires understanding and applying previously learned information to break a hole into its simplest form so that it makes more sense. For example, studying a passage for grammatical and spelling mistakes requires knowledge and understanding of grammatical rules and a huge vocabulary reservoir. In this way, analysis of mistakes can take place. This applies to any hole that can be broken into smaller components. Synthesis is a higher skill that requires making a hole out of smaller components, almost the opposite of analysis. Using given elements, ideas, pictures, or words to write a paragraph is a form of synthesis. It is a higher skill that requires knowledge, understanding, and application. Evaluation is the highest skill in the cognition domain. It involves giving judgment or assessment. This skill requires knowledge, understanding, application of knowledge, and analysis of the topic being assessed. For example, deciding which report is more suitable requires understanding the components of the report in addition to analysis of these components, and then opinion formation. Interpersonal skills are usually observed and assessed. They are not usually tested in a written form. The instructor should set a table of the skills that he or she wants to assess and either use a checklist or a five-item evaluation scale. The items shown in this slide are just examples of what skills to assess. The instructors can add or delete some items depending on what they want to assess. Communication skills are assessed in a similar way as the items in the previous table. These skills are actual implementation of communication, whether verbal or nonverbal. Some of these could overlap with other interpersonal skills in a way or another, since they fall within the same effective domain. The last domain is the psychomotor. The assessment of psychomotor skills takes place only in some courses where there are physical activities. Although physical activities require previous knowledge, what is practically assessed here is the body-mind coordination. In medicine, for example, a surgeon is not only assessed for knowledge, but also the skillful use of operation tools. To wrap things up, for effective assessment of CLOs, you need to do the following. Study your course specifications very carefully. This is done in line with the textbook and what it really offers. Complete the curriculum table. 
Complete the assessment table. Complete the topic weight table. Think of proper assessments of the CLOs. Fill in the CLOs table in Excel after each assessment. Once you have this table completed, you can say the job is perfectly done. The table should be submitted in time to the course coordinator and the quality team in your institution so they can use the results in the assessment of the program learning outcomes. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or queries, please do not hesitate to contact me here.